are several sovereign city-states around the world, such as the Vatican City, which manages trust franchises, the City of London, which manages the Debt is Money franchises, and the City of Washington, D.C., which handles the power and human trafficking franchises. There are several other lesser-known sovereign city-states that need more attention. CERN, with the Large Hadron Collider, manages the science franchises, which can be covered in another article. And here, the topic of this article, the United Nations encompasses the sovereign city-state of New York City and manages all legal franchises, from the courtrooms to legal presences to taxes to driver's licenses globally. Thanks to the United Nations, New York City is merely an illusionary aspect of the United States. The entirety of New York City has been taken over by the United Nations. The effect of the UN takeover of New York City extends to every county in America and affects every citizen on the planet. In August of 1947, the United States handed over Rockefeller-owned land to create the United Nations in New York City through the United Nations Headquarters Agreement. The treaty enabled the United Nations to own and control its own land with the option of expanding, widening its territory to the borough of Manhattan, the city of New York, and even the state of New York, all from an artifact of the treaty that places the United Nations in New York City. These secret supplemental agreements with the United States enables the UN to widen its land territories to at least to the city of New York. To this day, the State Department refuses to give us its true current definition of the United Nations Headquarters District. The effect of the treaty is historically obvious. The treaty removed all weaponized U.S. military physical presences from New York City. Within a year, the only active military base defending New York City was shuttered. The location is now only administrative. The New York City police are the most powerful police department in the United States, and that's because they aren't U.S.-based, they are U.N.-based. They act as the security intelligence arm of the United Nations and have intelligence services rivaling those of the U.S. FBI, CIA, and NSA. The banks based in New York City aren't a part of the United States either. New York City banks are literally international United Nations jurisdictional banks. That's why they only get fined by the U.S. and no bankers go to jail despite clear and obvious banking crimes and fraud. U.N. banks don't need to follow U.S. laws. An interesting rat fact about the City of London, they allow infinite rehypothecation, which is to say the same asset or piece of gold can be fractionally sold any number of times where the receipt is the only thing that needs to be delivered. It is literally a scam with multiple receipts for the same asset or piece of gold. The City of New York appears to allow the same infinite rehypothecation rules for financial assets and transactions. Such infinite rehypothecation is the only way for New York City to be competitive with the City of London's financial rules. Here is a mayor of New York City, Rudolph Giuliani, claiming New York City as the financial center of the world. And we'll commit ourselves to keeping major city institutions like the New York Stock Exchange right there where it belongs, in the financial capital of the world, in the financial capital of the world, in the financial capital of the world. All IRS taxes end up at the United Nations. The United Nations International Monetary Fund simply are doing business as the IRS and funds UN member nations with and by loans. The United States is not a country. It's a United Nations member nation, a corporation funded by loans of new debt money. Well, you're absolutely right, Judge. You know, what we have to look at is the president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. The president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. This corporation called the United States of America. The city of Washington, D.C. issues their own birth certificates separate from Maryland. Similarly, New York City issues their own birth certificates separate from the state of New York. Stunningly, Donald Trump has a City of New York birth certificate and is technically not eligible to be President of the United States for being a non-United States United Nations city-state citizen. Similarly, City of Washington, D.C. citizens are not eligible for U.S. presidency either. The majority of birth certificates worldwide end up at the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation at 55 Water Street, New York City. And this is where the legal franchises of the United Nations kicks in. The United Nations is the single global franchiser of legal presence strawmen to member nations. The birth certificates are exchanged by UN member nations for immunity in operating legal presences against the people. All nationals have been placed into a trust for being stateless. The United States is merely a de facto corporation managing the United Nations member nation franchise upon legal presences. The highest law is not the U.S. Constitution nor statutory code. The highest law is the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights and applies to legal presences. It is the definitive document of human slavery by imposition of legal presences, which are a corporate franchise overlay. 
The Universal Declaration of Human Rights are non-extendable limited benefits, not rights, that are granted merely to legal presences, which are literally and only corporate bank accounts behaving with corporate personhood, or better put, person corporatehood. The United Nations, through the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, outlaws justice across Earth due to the Nazis abusing the practice of legalisms with political, racial, and religious bias. The United Nations centralizes all things legal into a single structure and then replaces all courtrooms globally with competent national tribunals. Put another way, the United States Constitution has no place in UN competent national tribunals. That's how and why judges can operate without constitutionally required oaths and bonds. What Americans call judges are merely United Nations administrators. As proof that the UN has taken over the United States court system, here is a prosecutor for Washtenaw County claiming that his masters are the United Nations. Just like Michigan is simply a corporate, you know what the difference between the state of Michigan and the territory of Michigan. Is this correct? Do you know the difference? Uh, probably not the way that you do, because you seem to have studied this in some detail, which is great. Okay, so you're saying that ignorance of the law is an excuse. Is that correct? Uh, I believe that that is not an excuse, no. Okay, so then you need to know these things. Well, I'll have to talk to my masters at the United Nations about it. Well, I'll have to talk to my masters at the United Nations about it. Well, I'll have to talk to my masters at the United Nations about it. The United Nations has taken over every county courtroom across the United States. Courtrooms are now United Nations competent national tribunals. Attorneys are administrators of legal presences and operate the legal presence corporate overlay by forging our signature in the creation of every court case as a constructive trust. There are very few remedies to the system of United Nations human slavery. Expatriation to a non-United Nations member nation and canceling the UN birth certificate legal presence are apparently a few of the methods to actually change the jurisdiction to without the United Nations. An attorney once told me that everything legal is a fiction. As it turns out, everything legal is a lie. This is one reason why the world government of world citizens is so important. It is a non-legal lawful country outside the legal fictional construct of the United Nations. A citizen of the world government of world citizens is a non-legal private citizen. World citizens operate in our home country across the globe and are protected by the Foreign Sovereign Immunity Act in the United States for being without the United States. There are at least seven different definitions of the United States. The clearest statutory definition of the United States that can be provided is that it is the United Nations doing business as a legal overlay map of the 50 states located merely and singularly in the city of Washington, D.C. In that sense, the United Nations has taken over not just the state of New York, but also the city of Washington in the 50 states. Indeed, the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights has replaced all courts globally with competent national tribunals and imposed legal presence corporate overlay slavery upon all citizens in all UN member nations. Lastly, two quick rat facts about the United Nations. The reason why Vatican City refuses to join the UN is that it would have ceded power to the UN, but the UN authority is granted by the Vatican, not vice versa. The legal presences of the Vatican City must be ecclesiastical and not under any external authority such as the UN. Otherwise, the UN could replace all ecclesiastical courts with their competent national tribunals and profit from making criminals out of the clergy for their own purposes. The most comical and ironic aspect is the only real unique land that the United Nations owns and is thus centered is a small man-made wildlife refuge island called Uthant Island located outside the main United Nations headquarters made from tunnel construction debris. The entirety of the United Nations might be to protect Uthant Island from the rest of humanity.